This is Connecting Mobile Apps to Aero Cloud. My name is Darren Mason. I'm Principal Architect with Axway. Um, so before we start, I'm going to talk about the agenda. Uh, we're going to talk about some assumptions. We're going to talk about what is Aero. We're going to see about creating uh, an Aero local instance. We're going to run the uh, instance. We're going to also create a data model. We're going to look at some APIs that it creates and build the application. So before we get started, you're going to want to have a cloud account set up for Aero. You're going to want to download and install the command line interface tools. And when you do all this, you'll be a member of an organization, and that's used for organizing your projects and people in the organization. If you want to download the application, there's a link to it here. The presentation will be provided, uh, I believe, on Jive, most likely. So what you want to do is, before you start, you're going to want to log in to Accelerator and choose your organization. We're going to have Imagine Summit 2017 as our organization for this example. So before we start, let's talk about what Arrow is. Arrow is a fast container stack comprised of Node.js, a schemaless data store, and full MBAS capabilities. You can connect apps and websites using custom APIs, model objects, transfer data, as well as connect existing data stores such as Salesforce, MySQL, Mongo, Postgres, and more. There's also 20 pre-built services such as user management, check-ins, geofencing, push notifications, analytics, and more. So the first thing we want to do is create a project using CLI. First we'll navigate to our Imagine Summit workspace and to create the project we're going to do app C new. We're going to choose the arrow app option. And we're going to name it to do arrow connect. So now that we've created our local instance what does that give us? You're now able to access arrow features in the dashboard. We have Axway API runtime and Axway API builder. Runtime allows us to access the Facebook type features such as user management, photo management, reviews, check-ins, geofencing, etc., including push notifications. The Axway API Builder allows us to create custom APIs using arrow connectors to different data structures such as Salesforce, MySQL, Mongo, etc. We can also create custom arrow models. So now let's run the server. In a command line, change directories into to do arrow connect, then execute app C run. This will start up a local instance of our web server. As you can see, we have the local instance running now. And if I were to click on the arrow localhost, it opens up our local instance of our web server. Here we can build APIs, read documentation on our endpoints. So let's talk about a few things in our cloud instance. We have APIs, which shows us creation and usage of the APIs. We have blocks, which are functions used to execute code before and after calling an API. We have models which are used to provide the interface to accessing their models allowing for editing, extension, and deleting. We also have connectors that allow your app to access data from different external data sources. So now that we have our cloud instance running, we want to create our newest model and we're going to call it task. We're going to create an empty schema model type and we're going to use our AeroDB connector out of the box. So let's start by naming our model task we're going to create an empty schema and we're going to use our arrow database connector. We hit next. And we're going to add a few fields. We're going to add description. We're going to make that a string type. And then we're going to add completed. And we're going to make that a boolean. And we'll hit next. And we'll give it all the typical properties for a CRUD app. As you can see, we've created a JavaScript object representing our new task model. The newly created field names, the connector types, and all the allowed API actions we use. So we'll save that. And now we have APIs. So if we look here, we can see all of our APIs for our task model, such as find all, create, update, delete and we can test these so we'll create one right here we'll call it get milk and we'll do a create 
And as you can see, we get a 201, which is success. We do a find. We hit find. And we have a JSON object returning back our get milk response. So now let's talk about using Studio to build the application. In the Studio, we have about four or five different files that we're going to need to manage. One of the files is REST API, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, the other one is the controller. We have a model that's going to model our data called tasks. We have our view XML, which is just going to be our, our user interface. And then we have Alloy.js. So the first thing we're going to want to do is add this REST API file to the sync folder. This handles all of our API interactions. And then we're going to remove all content from the Alloy.js file. So let's talk about what REST API JS file is. The REST API JS is an overriding backbone sync file that we're using to delegate our API calls from Backbone's save and fetch functions. These are built into Backbone and Backbone has a sync function that can be overridden to allow you to persist data either in a database or through an API or however you would like. So using the studio to build the application so we have our task.js file which is our model and the way we would create this is you would go into models and you would right click and say new model and you pick the adapter in this case we'll pick the SQL because it doesn't really matter because we're going to change that we give it the model name in this case we'll give it a task and we'll just hit OK I'm just going to cancel it for now but you can see it would create something along this line and then the one thing we would have to add would be these three things here so we, we want our configuration to point to our endpoint which is in this case our local host and our task endpoint. We're going to create a basic authentication which is just a 64 encoded key and then we're going to talk about our adapter which is our REST API JS file so our type is REST API our collection name is tasks with an S because it's a collection and our parent node is task because that's the the first node we want to access and if we look at if we look at this model you can see that there's some there's some other objects in here before we hit our array which is task so we don't since we want to skip those we're gonna just notify that it's tasks which is what this does extend model and extend collections allows you to override built-in functionalities if you'd like to do extra stuff if you need to to the models or the collection the next thing we want to do is set up the view for model view binding and the way we want to do that is in our in our view we're going to add this collections tag at the top here called tasks and then we want to make sure our data collection says tasks because that's what we're going to be using what that collection tag does is it creates a singleton or instance of our collection that allows us to be able to access it through alloy.collections namespace for the controller and you can do that also through if you if you want to you can do it in code through alloy create collection and then give it the name tasks the way we're going to get our data is we're going to call fetch which is Backbone's built-in function and what that does the fetch call delegates to the Backbone sync function which will call a git for our API to get all all the tasks we have a controller index file which will be our controller for the application what we're seeing here is a save task function and basically what that does is it creates a new task model and then it saves the model into the collections by adding it to the alloy collections task which also delegates to the rest api js backbone function sync which triggers a post that calls our api so now that we've seen how some of this works let's see the application running so we're going to hit run and it's going to do a build for us as you can see we see git milk which was the task that I created on the arrow client and if we add a new one it persists and posts to our application so if we go into our task here and we do a find all we do find we should see get eggs and get milk so indeed the APIs do work our application is a success so lastly if you need any other references or examples, I've listed a few in the presentation here. There's a link to the REST API and a few other Alloy examples here. Thank you. This has been Connecting Mobile Apps to Aero Cloud. Again, my name is Darren Mason. Here's my email if you have any questions on the presentation or 
the project, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to help you out.